Good morning everybody and a very warm welcome to our service here at St Hildebrand. Due to technical difficulties, the service today will consist only of our gospel reading and a homily. So let's have a moment of stillness and of silence as we come before the word of God this morning. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard about the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it is already getting late. Send the crowds away so that they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And may I speak in the name of the living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Gospel for today brought back a strong childhood memory. The feeding of the 5,000, as it is often known, is one of the earliest memories that I have of hearing of Jesus' ministry. And it sticks in my memory all the more because of an illustration used to deliver the meaning behind it. I can still recall a young child dressed in 1970s clothes, handing over his Tupperware lunchbox to Jesus. And that image has stayed in my memory, resur resurfacing whenever I read this passage from Matthew. The boy in the picture could have been me. He was wearing the same awful fashions of the period and had the same home-administered pudding bowl haircut that made me look like Henry V on all of my junior school photographs. Even the lunchbox was the same, though I don't think the miracle of the chicken paste sandwich and the monster munch crisps has the same ring to it. Yet I don't think that the fact that the boy and I in the picture both suffer from catastrophic wardrobe malfunctions is the reason why this memory is so strong. Rather, it is that the boy has a part to play just as I did then and do now. This is also why I'm here to support this service, this parish, this church. The boy hands over his lunch because there are people in real need. God wants those people to be cared for. God cares for those who go hungry, be that for food or warmth or even love. And God will look to us to help this be achieved. It seems strange that we are being told to cut down on what we eat. I am just as guilty as anyone as piling on the pounds over lockdown. Thankfully my gym finally reopened this week. And the scales there didn't so much speak my weight as beg me to get off. Yet amidst all this overconsumption, there is hunger and there is fear, and we are being asked to respond. These strange and difficult times will see more and more people worry about the next meal, the next fuel bill, the next time a friendly face will pop along simply to say hello. We must remember that Jesus is physically feeding a people who would have known hunger. Famines and floods meant loss of life on a massive scale. Day to day, season by season, people had enough to get by and not much more. 
Look at the Lord's Prayer that we say each time we pray to God. We give thanks for our daily bread. But have we forgotten that every meal we have is a blessing? There is a tradition of God feeding the needy. In Exodus, God provides food in the wilderness. Isaiah calls upon the people to share your bread with the hungry. Psalm 107 tells us of God's abundance. He satisfies the thirsty and with the hungry he fills with good things. Yet here the action comes not directly from God, but through those who God sends out. The apostles are all for sending the people away to look for the food by themselves. Yet we are told that they are in an isolated rural spot. There would not have been much food for sale, let alone for that many people. Even Tesco didn't have branches in first century Judea. The chances of finding food would have been slim. The apostles are simply saying that the people can do without that it is the time for the inner circle to look after itself. Yet Jesus tells them no. Go and find the food and feed the people. He would not send the hungry away, and those whom he would follow would not do the same. The miracle lies not in the numbers that were fed, but in the fact that other people are stepping forward to help. And miracles go on. God still works through people to make sure that the hungry are filled with good things. We see it in the university graduates who turn down high-flying jobs to train instead as teachers for inner city schools. We see it in the medical students who, rather than returning to the safety of their homes, choose instead to remain and work on the front line in these difficult times. We see it in communities of faith who welcome the lost and the lonely, and don't close their doors on those who are in need. God still cares for the needy and still works through us right here in Hoyling. I have seen the bags of food left at the vicarage. There may not be baskets because does anyone use baskets anymore? But they are tangible signs that through each of us God still cares for those who are on the margins of life. The lost, the hungry, the frightened are not sent away to fend for themselves. Here in God's house, with the people of God, they are welcomed and we do what we can to support them. That is the message for you today. Continue to be the conduits of God's unending care. Pray for those in need. Stand beside them. Let them know that they are loved and valued by God. We do not know to what degree the current crisis will affect those around us who are already in want. But we do know that God wouldn't want them to be cared for. And it is ourselves who must strive to see his will be done. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his peace. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.